Dave Feldman is well known for his research on cholesterol, triglycerides, and lipid metabolism. Some very important data for his research has come from experimenting on himself. At the time of this interview, he had done 105 blood tests over just 35 months. For example, in one of his experiments, he purposely gained about 25 pounds of fat over just four weeks to understand what happens in the body when you switch from a standard American diet to a ketogenic diet. This involved 21 blood tests and produced some very interesting findings on triglycerides and cholesterol. Here's Dave talking with me after his presentation at the Low Carb Houston event. He's explaining another interesting experiment of his called the Tandem Drop Experiment, which for me totally changed my understanding of LDL cholesterol. So Dave, earlier you gave this uh, mind-blowing talk on cholesterol and uh, you, you told us about this experiment where you started off with how high was your cholesterol? It was close to 300. I want to say it was maybe 297. Okay. And, 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 that's, and that's LDL cholesterol, the so-called bad cholesterol. If any doctor looked at that, what would they say? Like, you must have such and such condition? Oh, or? for sure. I mean, it's uh, to help kind of give a perspective, uh, what they want your LDL cholesterol to be at is typically 100 milligrams per deciliter. So this is already three times that amount. And typically, if they see uh, LDL cholesterol of 190 or above, they assume that it's genetic, something known as familial hypercholesterolemia. I was 110 higher than that. And that was at the beginning of this experiment. What was the span of this experiment? Uh, it actually was around 10 days, but the target time I was interested in was going to be seven days from, this, from the heightened level of where this started at. And what happened in seven days? Well, what happened was is I ended up um, consuming a special diet. We'll just call it a special diet at first. That I predicted would actually bring my LDL cholesterol down probably faster than any other time I had brought my cholesterol down. And this came a lot from my research. And I selected this diet because it's a kind of diet that I know nobody would ever in their right mind recommend to anyone. That diet was white bread and processed meat. Okay. Specifically, I ate a lot of Wonder Bread in particular because I frankly don't think very highly about Wonder Bread, so, so you know they're not a sponsor of my work. <laughs> when I did so, each single day my cholesterol dropped substantially to where after seven days it had actually gone all the way down to 83 milligrams per deciliter. Wow. Well under the optimal range To add some quick background for what Dave is about to talk about, LDL, the so-called bad cholesterol, is short for low-density lipoprotein. LDL itself is not actually cholesterol. LDL is a lipoprotein boat that carries around cholesterol and triglycerides. Triglycerides, which are used as a source of energy for various tissues in the body. The main thing I was trying to demonstrate with this was that all that really mattered was that I was going to be moving from a low-carb, high-fat diet Mm -hmm. to a high-carb, low-fat diet. And in doing so, I'd be switching my metabolism. Mm -hmm. Switching my metabolism to run less on fat, more on carbs, and in particular on glucose. There'd be less need to carry around the fatty acids found inside of these lipid-carrying proteins, known as lipoproteins, Mm -hmm. to power my body. And in doing so, my LDL cholesterol dropped as well because cholesterol ride shares in these same lipoproteins. Okay. And it's, it's important to emphasize, again, I chose this diet for it not being something that one would associate with positive health. In fact, I jokingly would refer to it as the prison food diet. The reason is because it's about the energy metabolism, the energy metabolism in particular, not so much the quality of the food. Most people would hear, okay, processed meat and Wonder Bread, that is an awful diet. But they would look at your LDL and say, oh, you got your your LDL is so, quote unquote, healthy. Um, What happened? Did you have any other markers that would indicate uh, maybe this isn't the full picture? Absolutely. And that's what a lot of my talk was uh, focused on. Certainly a lot of my research is focused on this. Because to take a step back, a lot of it is based around what was it that really moved around these numbers and does this affect other lipid numbers that you see in the same cholesterol panel? Because LDL is not the only marker for risk. We also have 
HDL cholesterol, the so-called good cholesterol. And we have something known as triglycerides. Not a lot of people understand triglycerides, but when I was talking about that fatty acid cargo that's fueling my body, that's stored form of fat, is, it's known as triglycerides. And that's the cargo of these lipoproteins. Well, if your triglycerides found in a blood test, particularly a fasted blood test, prove to be very high, well, that can be problematic because it's definitely associated with cardiovascular disease. And actually, it's even associated with all-cause mortality. Well, a lot of the studies that I like to look into are the ones that examine not one, but all three. That look at LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, and triglycerides. And what I found is, is when they stratify for all three, and in particular, when they make a group of those people who have high HDL cholesterol and low triglycerides, you find that the LDL cholesterol doesn't actually have that much of a difference to make. Taking that back to my experiment, sure enough, yes, those two markers changed a lot as well. Mm -hmm. My triglycerides shot from, I want to say, the mid-70s to above 200. My HDL cholesterol dropped almost 20. So you were saying triglycerides are the cargo of the lipoprotein. So the lipoprotein is, is carrying these things around, and if your triglycerides are super high, could we say that's analogous to basically somebody driving something around in a truck and they just can't find a parking spot? That's exactly right. In fact, this is, this is a lot of where we can uh, look at something that's commonly referred to in the literature as personal fat threshold. So let's talk about what that means. Personal fat threshold, we all have a certain threshold by which we can store fat-based energy in our adipose tissue, adipose tissue being your body fat. And it's generally uh, agreed on now, it's kind of somewhat new science, that there's a lot more focus that's going into adipose tissue, not just for staging these, uh, this fat-based energy, but as an organ itself, it actually talks a lot through the endocrine system and so forth, does a lot of signaling. Well, it has a capacity, which does seem to be fairly individualized. Some people, and especially different ethnicities, will find that they can max out their personal fat threshold sooner. Some find they can do it later. Some find that actually they can grow very large, actually take on a lot of weight. But once you're hitting the max capacity point, there's a problem. The problem shows up in something known as ectopic fat. Ectopic fat is really just another way of saying storing fat in tissues that weren't really designed to store fat. What tissue is designed to store fat? Adipose tissue, adipocytes. They're the pros. They're good at it. They're good at staging it. They're good at passing it along. You can almost think of like a, a basketball team, but the team is made up of trillions of cells. That's your adipocytes. They're constantly getting the ball. They're passing it not only to other tissues, but also to other adipocytes. And that's good. They're good at it. When they're getting to a point where they've got too many balls and they can't pass them along, well, these lipoproteins, these boats, they have to find other places to put this energy. Because the body knows there's one place that's worse than stashing this energy into ectopic fat, and that's to park the energy in the bloodstream. Bloodstream can't get full up with fat to the point where it can't move anything around. It's the information superhighway for it. So it's got to be able to get things around. Okay, so it's, it's like it, it has to be put somewhere. It can't stay in the highway. Uh, we can't put in the adipocyte because you've maxed out your personal fat threshold. Right. And so, you know, it's at least better to jam it in around the intestines and then the pancreas and the liver and... Even the heart can pick up some ectopic fat. You can find fat in tissues you don't even want to imagine. And let me tell you, that's a bad sign. But guess what? It tends to correlate with something you can pick up in this basic lipid panel, high levels of triglycerides. Mm -hmm. So the higher your triglycerides, the more that it's clear those boats are having trouble turning around that cargo. Okay. So, so you would say if you have super high triglycerides, that's probably a pretty good indication that your body is developing fatty liver or it's creating that ectopic fat. Like high triglycerides means we're probably making ectopic fat. Is that it's, pretty straightforward? It is. I want to throw in one little extra caveat. Okay. The caveat is, really want to emphasize, I want to see triglycerides in a fasted blood test. Because if you've just eaten, 
then you definitely have a lot of triglycerides in your bloodstream, especially if you're on a low carb, high fat diet. You've actually just loaded up that cargo onto those boats. So what I want to see is I want to see, hey, if I fast for 12 to 14 hours, just water only, will I still see a high level of triglycerides? Because those triglycerides should have been parked by then. They, that work should have been generally uh, completed. Now, you can do multi-day fasting, and that too can raise triglycerides, but marginally, not by a lot. Why, why is it? Well, a lot of it's because from a systemic standpoint, you think about it, it was anticipating that more would be coming in from the other side. And now all of a sudden you're introducing this multi-day fasting. So as more are coming in, it then eventually evens back out again. So this may be in, let's say, the first you know, one, two, three days, and then we tend to find it starts dropping back down again as you get further along in the week. Is there something you can share about the function of LDL? You, you touched on it a little bit earlier that might uh, shift someone's perspective in the importance of it. So... What you're touching on is something that's often referred to as the lipid hypothesis, which is the hypothesis, generally speaking, that the higher levels of LDL cholesterol you have, the more you're at risk for atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis being the buildup of plaque in your arterial wall. Now, I myself grew up my whole life believing that this is the case. I mean, basically, the higher your cholesterol in your blood, the more likely you are to die, period. And I was kind of surprised because the more I was finding studies, the more I found that actually there seems to be some contexts involved that makes this make a lot less sense. So, for example, with females, uh, there's study after study that shows the higher levels of cholesterol, generally the lower their all-cause mortality. Likewise, it seems that there's an age factor. So male and female, you get it, say, above age 50. And there's quite a lot of studies that show it's actually protective to have higher levels of LDL cholesterol. This kind of surprised me a bit. Well, this model, this energy model that I've been working through with my research, it actually further identifies that there may, in fact, be higher levels of LDL cholesterol for a mechanistic reason. And we talked about that a little bit earlier in that I'm saying there's these boats traveling around dropping off triglycerides. Well, I can't help but put this forward. If your triglycerides are really low, but your LDL cholesterol is really high, and presumably your LDL particle count is really high, how can we then not assume that there may just be a lot of boats that had to carry a lot of these triglycerides, VLDLs, they start out as VLDLs, that are now LDLs? Therefore, there had to be that much turnover. Your triglycerides being that low gives you the big clue. So let me use an analogy that I like, that I use with a lot of people. Let's say that we're sitting out there and there's a harbor over here and we're watching all these boats go out and there's like a hundred boats going out. And I'm sitting next to you, I'm like, that's, that's way too many boats. They shouldn't have that many boats going out. And you're saying, Dale, hold on, hold on a sec, Dave. It seems like the cargo that's on it, when they're coming back, is no longer there. So that probably is meeting the demand for wherever it is they were going. We don't even need to know where they were going, unless you think the cargo is falling off the boats, right? But then we come back next year, and there's 500 boats. Okay, well, now that's way too many boats. You say, oh, hold on, Dave, hold on. Let's look. As we're watching it, sure enough, they circulate back over and over again without the cargo. Well, no, maybe it's the demand may have changed for the amount of cargo that's on those boats. But I can tell you one One time we might agree, it's when we're looking in a harbor and there's a whole bunch of boats full of cargo just bumping into each other. They don't seem to be going anywhere. There's nowhere to go. That probably is the bigger problem. And that's why I put out this challenge on social media. I like to call it the low-carb cholesterol challenge. Uh I said, look, just just send me any studies with normal, non-treated people. No confounding, just normal swath of people who have high HDL cholesterol, low triglycerides, with high LDL cholesterol. And I want to see if they have high cardiovascular disease. A little over two months ago, I put out a budget of 1000 bucks, and I said I will give $300 for somebody just sending me a link. Just find me a link to one study that shows this. Just one study. And as of yet, right now, I have two studies that show the opposite, that show if people have low triglycerides, they have high HDL. Even when they have high LDL, they have low cardiovascular disease. Two studies that do that, and both of them have thousands in their population. And believe me, I would like more and larger studies to make this data even better. Uh 
And those data sets are out there, uh, data sets like Mesa or Pure and so forth. So it may be only a matter of time until we get a study against those. But I want to stratify on that triad, those three in together. Don't look just at LDL. Yeah. Look at also having high HDL and low triglycerides because, again, this comes back to this mechanistic energy model. Maybe the ships are succeeding, dropping off their cargo. So therefore, maybe this is not somebody who's in a metabolically inflexible or metabolically unhealthy state as to why it is that they would have higher LDL cholesterol. For more from Dave, you can find him on Twitter at at Dave Keto and on YouTube if you search for Dave Feldman. And much more information on Dave's research and experiments is available at cholesterolcode.com. I'll include a link to the remainder of this interview where Dave discusses the important roles of LDL cholesterol, lean mass hyperresponders, and more. So check the description.